Well folks, here we are, part two of the video, and um, we're going to be doing the rear vented discs uh, conversion now from solid. To start the video off, obviously we're going to need a few bits and pieces here. We're going to be using all the tools from the first video, as seen. And top of that then, we're obviously going to need some rear vented discs. These ones are from Mintech. Uh, pads, wider caliper and carriers suited for a set of vented discs from over 75. And top of that then, we're going to have a couple of the brake line grips there, the plastic red things, and a few other extra wee specifics, including open-ended ring spanners and a little bit of brake fluid for topping up as we go along. Um, open-ended spanners, worth having, a uh, good useful thing in this situation when you're moving the caliper. Otherwise, it can just make your life a lot more difficult, and the last thing you want to do is to round them off. You're not going to need a huge amount of brake fluid unless you're flushing the whole system. Uh, I only personally fitted maybe a couple hundred mil throughout the whole thing. It's more for whenever you're bleeding the system through with your easy bleed. So then of course here we have, we have the wider uh, rear calipers. These obviously are different to the standard uh, solid calipers and it's the same with the rear vented uh, carriers. They're um, a good bit wider as well to allow the fitting of the rear vented disc. So then, what else you're also going to need? Well, an essential tool I always think to have is an easy bleed system. This makes a lot easier when doing things like clutches, whenever you're doing things like uh, your brakes and all. Yes, you can use the easy bleed system yourself to do jobs yourself. Or if you really, really fancy, um, like I've done in this method, is just get someone out to help pump the brakes for you. Whenever you actually are going to be bleeding the brakes at the end, you want to make sure that your brake fluid is going into plenty more brake fluid in that bottle. You want the brake fluid to be nice and full so that there's no risk of air getting sucked back into the system. Um, other than that, it's almost identical. The rear vented discs and pads, um, as I say again, they're from M-Tech. There's nothing too strange or difficult, easy to find, and all parts are listed in the description below. Now, um, with regards to any other bits and pieces we might need, the one thing I'd recommend most of all here is a really good flathead. You see, this is a flathead I've bent into shape. This is going to be for whenever you're in adjusting the uh, adjuster on the uh, shoes themselves inside the brake disc. Right, so we're inside the car now. Um, before we begin anything, obviously, you want to make sure that the car front wheels are very well secured, if it's in gear or locked in or whatever. Um, you're now going to take off your leather gear gator um, and you're going to loosen and slacken up your handbrake first of all. The reason you're doing this at the start is potentially the brake shoes inside the brake disc may have already been seized or expanded or be over tight causing binding. So nice easy handy job, get yourself a good extension and wind the screw to the end. Now don't wind it off, all you're doing is winding the screw to the end. Now, um, also as well, make sure your brake reservoir is handy. Um, Right-hand drive cars have the brake reservoir on this side. This is a left-hand drive car, so you'll see the brake reservoir is on the opposite side. Rule of thumb is it's always in front of the steering wheel on a Rover 75. Next job, with the car safely jacked up, and again here I've used a combination of jack at the tow bar uh, for extra security, and instead of jacked up by the sills, I've used a real trailing arm. Take the rear wheel off. Um, if the tire is seized, give it a damn good kick with a steel toe cap boot to the flat of the tire. When you're in there, have a good poke around. Look for damage to springs, brake lines, leaking shocks. If your rear arms are starting to bend, anything that's going to become a problem in the future for your car, it's a great opportunity to start looking at preventative maintenance. So straight off the bat, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to use a brake line clamps. Um, I use three per side personally, and I only ever do one side at a time if I'm changing renewing calipers and pairs. Um, use them at different stages. This will help you develop uh, resistance to any additional air being sucked in. And you do not want to remove the caliper yet. The most you'll be doing is shortly is uh, actually cracking the uh, connector, which connects the caliper line to the caliper. Once that's done, you're going to be um, getting ready to start remove the actual physical hardware. A lot of it process is almost identical to the front discs video. Um, this video obviously being that we're changing from solid discs to vented discs, 
the principle is the same um, if you're doing just a standard solid disc renewal the good thing is you obviously don't have to replace the calipers but again if you find that your calipers are maybe worn damaged or seized this is a good thing for you to be able to know and to be able to follow as i was saying there is there's the flared spanner this is on a other caliper i have you're going to want to crack that uh, tight tight uh, connection now rather than wait until the caliper's off because it can be pretty tight with all the heat cycles it goes through just crack it open once and then it'll drip ever so slightly and then tighten it back up it just means that whenever you can remove it later on it also stops excess air getting into the system now what we're going to do is we're going to get that grub screw off um, with the solid rear disc on a Rover 75 you can't cheat and just throw a flat head through the veins to hold it in place so this is a little method I developed whenever I was replacing a set of snap brake lines on my cars many years ago and the cable, the handbrake cable had snapped and the disc just freely, freely span so you won't be able to obviously unscrew the grub screw this way so what I do is take two wheel nuts and get my breaker bar what you're going to want to do then is you're going to spin the wheel around until the breaker bar and wheel nuts act like a pivot now um, in my influence wisdom I forgot what side to be doing it on so it's nice and easy as you can see just put it in place leaving room for access to the rub screw and using the torque of the breaker bar on the ground it allows you to loosen off that grub screw voila um, like I say this is a great method if you don't have an impact gun or an air gun etc and uh, also if your uh, grub screw might particularly be partially rounded off and you're worried about damaging it uh, with a high impact gun take the grub screw off have a quick check make sure that there's no damages to the threads etc if you want to renew or replace now it's the time to do so um, Bust out your size 7 allen key bit onto your ratchet and remove the rear dust covers on the back of the caliper. That's two wee black rubbers. Now with the rear shock and lower arm in the way, access can be a bit tricky. Um, this is one of these times that you're going to have to go under the car and unloosen them. Um, again, they're not massively tight, but it's just more of an awkward job if your car was on a ramp you'd have it a lot easier speaking of ramps check out that ramp of a gut that's on me there absolutely disgraceful need to lose a bit of weight but sure we'll lose weight when i lose a few more cars so all you're doing now is just gently unscrewing with your your bit there the uh, brake caliper sliders again this is a identical process to the front discs um in this particular case once you renew them um you can choose to either replace them or just give them a clean with and then refit with some good anti-slip so again you'll see me here removing them by hand at the very end this again is just something I like to do making sure that there's no issues with regards um, whenever they're pulling in and out if there's any issues with regards maybe rust inside it if there's anything stopping free movement etc so literally the sliders operate as their name as sliders uh, for the sake of seven or eight quid on ebay when you're doing this whole process i would recommend replacing them um, very very cheap and easy but to swap out so now what we're going to do is this is the tricky part to actually physically get the disc off there's a little adjuster gear in the top middle of that image on screen what you're now going to do is this is what holds your handbrake as your handbrakes pull out the handbrake shoes push towards the disc and hold in place so what we now do is, using that flathead that I told you about earlier on, put the flathead through a bolt hole. And what you want to do is, you're going to push the gear down. You can see the up and down movement there. What you're trying to do here is to reduce the excess push of the brake shoes onto the disc. So whenever it's nice and loose then, um, with your caliper, just pry it off the same as you would use in the front. Um, if the caliper is resistance just wiggle it backwards and forwards it's the same in the rear disc once you have the caliper off the rear disc should just pop off like so um, looking around the rear inside of the shoes you can check to see excess wear you see these two areas different colors that's your brake shoe pad surface area you want to have good plenty of that if it's all same colored steel it's probably worn in time to replace 
if you have any lip on the inside of the shoes and uh, or at the inside of the disc as well this is where you can see if you've any problems and it might be worth replacing check the whole area make sure everything's okay all you want to then do is just do a little bit of preventative cleaning degrease it and what i then personally do is because my brake shoes on this car are in pretty good condition i give them a wee quick going over with the wire metal drill bit nice and handy all i'm going to be doing here is a couple of quick coats of black paint you want to make sure you obviously don't spray any onto the shoe and if you do spray it onto the shoe once everything's dried give it a wipe off and grind down you're not wanting to get any around the hub bearing itself or any of the abs sensor um, this is just a quick and cheap uh, thing to hopefully prolong the life of your rear dust covers a bit longer everything's going pretty well so far here um, before refitting what you're wanting to do now is give yourself a wee squirt of anti-seize onto the gear in the middle of the shoes and we can start beginning the reassembly process reassembly again very same process as the front give it a damn good degrease now because of using the shoes on the inside you want to make sure you degrease the inside of the shoes as well simply refit over the hub on inside the shoes using your grub screw tighten it up and that's you whatever you do do not squirt any wd-40 or any kind of uh, water-based silicone inside for lubrication now that the disc has slid onto place you're again just going to be tightening that grub screw very very lightly we'll return to that for the end of the video to tighten it up now here's the opportunity that you have um we're going to be refitting the new extended rear carrier if you haven't already cleaned up the rear carrier now is the time to do so my rear calipers were brand new however my ex larger vented rear carriers were not so i took the time to give them a damn good clean up with the wire brush make sure they're usable make sure that there's no rust or pitting or any problems that potentially get in the way uh, the same with the rear bolts as well that will be used for mounting them you can use the same bolts on a solid or vented they are a delisted part number now likes of x part and rimmers and all don't carry them anymore however i will as the video goes on list up the part number it is a bmw e36 part number for the bolts so now we're going to match off the correct caliper as you can see the calipers almost look identical except for where the brake line actually screws into the caliper and um, they're sided so this is again a good chance to take the opportunity to match make sure they're right so you're not bending or stretching the brake line unnecessarily um, I decided I really wanted to give the carrier an extra cleaning here before refitting. Now what will you do is refit with the bolts. As I said, if you need to replace the bolts, now is the time to do so. There's the part number. Uh, for the sake of two or three quid on eBay or from your parts store, very worthwhile doing. You're now going to just simply do reverse the process, put a little bit of anti-seize on the bolts and tighten up the rear carrier from the rear. Uh, like i say this is not a difficult job this is just a case now whenever you're retightening up those bolts you want to make sure they're up to 47 foot pounds of torque or 64 newton meters um again this is where your torque bar is going to come in like i say if you're reusing old bolts you really don't want to exceed the torque specifications because they could be up to 20 years old depending on the age of the rover 75 or mgzd but, like I say, also, if you happen to have the chance to renew and replace them, it's definitely worth doing. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to physically swap the solid caliper brake pipe onto the vented caliper brake pipe. Um, earlier on in the video, you saw me cracking the bolt and pipe that as it connects to the caliper as standard. So, this obviously has remained attached the entire time to reduce the risk of any air entering the system. Um it's a wee bit more awkward because what you actually have to do is once you crack the uh, adjustment on the old caliper which is still behind there you'll see it come off in a wee second here and um, you need to then unscrew it as you can see with your new replacement brake caliper being very very handy put it on as quick as possible the problem with it is is because of where the shocks located it's a bit of an awkward job if you're doing it on the ground much easier if you're doing it on the air or on a ramp etc it's just getting the right angle of attack threading the brake line in correctly and 
then it should just screw on nicely. Again, this is not a difficult part of the process. If you're using the three brake line grips like I have there, it's almost impossible for you to be losing any brake fluid. So again, this will make life a lot, lot easier when it comes to bleeding the system. Now, unfortunately here, I blocked the camera. Um, this again was just me attempting to get this caliper on. My calipers were aftermarket new replacements and they were slightly smaller on the inside of the thread. Um, made things slightly more difficult, but at the end of the day, I'd rather have a new set of calipers fitted than a pair of 20 year old ones that were well past their sell by date, um, especially considering how much effort we're going into the new job. You could easily have refurbished them, but because of my circumstances here, changing from a smaller caliper to a larger caliper, it wouldn't have worked out, but I have kept the calipers for future jobs and replacements and refurbishing on other cars. So that's you. The brake line is now basically connected roughly to the brake caliper. What you're wanting to do now is you're wanting to tighten it up. You may have to spin the caliper around a wee bit more as you're tightening and as you're going through here. What you'll find is that when you get it almost tightly perfect, you want to then check that there's no kinks in the brake line at all. And as you then are reassembling in the future, also make sure that the brake line is absolutely rock tight. Make sure there's no leaks before you go forward. Next part of the video is we're going to fit the uh, brake pads into the system. Again, front brake pad, just fits perfectly easy onto the carrier rear brake pad same as the front pops into the caliper i had already given them a wee uh, squirt with anti seize on the tops bottoms and at the parts facing away from the brake disc so quick assembly once they're all ready to rock and roll this is a a lot simpler part you'll find that if you've done the fronts first by the time you tackle the rears if you've never done brakes before it's a lot easier and a lot more relaxing to do now, next stage here is we're going to refit the slider pins and uh, greased up. If you're using new ones, this is the time to do it. If you're renewing your old ones, hopefully you've given them a damn good clean before you put them back in here. Nothing fancy, nothing difficult. You've already been through this before. Just tighten them up to 21 foot pounds of torque or 28 newton meters. Again, don't go crazy with these. They don't need to be on extremely tight. Um, follow the torque settings as recommended. And it will make your life a lot easier going forward, especially whenever it comes to doing the next couple of renews of your brake discs and pads in the future. Essentially, that's the process almost done now for the actual physical mounting of the rear caliper and carrier upgrade from vent to solid. We're going to be getting to the bleeding stage here in a minute. Now, personally, I always, when I'm doing the rear caliper and carriers, if I'm replacing one, I will actually bleed the caliper out before I even go anywhere near the handbrake. That is just to prevent any you know, interference from the handbrake shoes, making you feel that the caliper is gripping better than it should be. As you're finishing and tightening and torquing them up, you're going to be grabbing your front anti-rattle clip. Um, it's a clip on this rear one, unlike the front, which is a spring. It pops in very very easy as you can see compared to the old ones um, we'll now grab our easy bleed this is a brilliant tool it's used by me on a very regular basis on all my 75s and zt's that's something i can't recommend that anyone with a 75 or zt especially a manual 75 zt can't recommend it enough nice and easy just pop the excess hose onto the end of your brake line Loosen your brake line off with your little open-ended spanner, um, five, six, seven mil, depending on the size of the brake nozzle. Have someone bounce in the car and pump the brakes as you bleed them out. You're obviously gonna make sure that you have plenty of brake fluid in the reservoir under the bonnet. And if you're at this for quite some time, every time you've pumped it maybe half a dozen times, get out there and check and top up brake fluid as necessary. Right, now for the rear handbrake. Um, first thing I would always suggest whenever you're doing a rear handbrake, especially if you've done a rear caliper, is to give it some time for the brake pistons to push back into place. Otherwise, they're going to be interfering with the uh, 
brake desk itself, making the handbrake feel tighter than it really is. Simply lie on your side, turn the brake desk around so that you can get through using one of the holes onto the gear, same as the reversal process, and click the gear back into place. Now what will happen is you're going to be clicking every few clicks, check the movement is spinning still freely, and then all you're going to be doing is continuously clicking it up using a hammer around the outside edge. What will happen is that the handbrake shoes will start to engage and the disc will get stiffer and stiffer. What you're aiming for here is to build this up and every time you start getting the disc that it feels like it's not going to move anymore, hit it with a hammer, hit it with a hammer around the sides and fronts and it will loosen the handbrake shoes up. This is probably the best way I find to try and get as almost as efficient as possible handbrake on a 75 before you've even adjusted it in the cabin. As you can see, what it goes from being stiff to being loose when you hit it with the hammer makes a big, big difference to the process. Um, not a hard thing to do. It's just trial and error, trial and error, trial and error until it absolutely seizes and locks solid. Um, when it does get to the stage of being seized and locked solid, whenever, even with the hammer, it doesn't want to move anymore like this. This is when you want to double check it a couple of times with the hammer and then just slightly roll the gear back ever so slightly. Two or three rolls is usually enough. Um, I was being quite cautious on this. You want to have some resistance on the handbrake. You don't want it to be completely free flowing because what's going to happen is the shoes are going to bed into the new discs. Um, it is a bit of a cheat, um, but I find it works very nicely. Grab two wheel bolts and your breaker bar now whenever it gets to the stage that you're happy with and instead of using your hands there, try moving it around. You want to have the resistance that it just catches ever so slightly. Again, this is trial and error. You're going to know what feels loose and what feels tight. The slightest bit of resistance is what you're after here, just as if the brake shoes are just touching and no more. If you're having to strain, it's too tight. If you can move it quite freely like that, you're on to a winner. All you do to do now is do the other side, then bounce back in the cabin and re-tighten the slack screw. Um, this will be a slow process. What you're wanting to do is you'll see me as I'm tightening, lifting the handbrake up and down, checking to see if it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, what you're aiming for is rock solid locked wheels at three clicks. Um, now this obviously, assuming you're not using a mini compensator or anything like that, now, we have got to the stage now that I've got the handbrake adjusted to the correct depth um, from the end of the thread. Bounce outside and put wheel nuts on two of the holes again, do it on both sides. What you want to do is bounce in and out of the car with the handbrake on one click, nip round, check how tight the handbrake shoes are, release it, check them to spin freely, bounce back in, two clicks, check how tight they are, release, check it spins freely, and then three clicks, bounce back in, check that they're nice and nice and tight and firm. Three clicks is hopefully where you shouldn't have to worry about the, sh the uh, disc spinning at all. You should feel really, really firm. And once you're done, that's you done with doing your handbrake adjustment. And that's you. Just bounce out, re-around the car, check all your wheel nuts, refit the wheels as you're doing so. Check the wheel nuts are torqued to 92 foot pounds or 125 newton meters. And Again, check them all in 100 miles. Even though if you've done them on a separate day, I personally like to go around and check the front wheel nuts as well, if I've done the brakes as they are. And that's you, that's the process. Yes, it's a bit sped up. Yes, it's a bit of an overview, but hopefully it helps answer a few things for you guys. Bounce back in the cabin, refit the leather handbrake and grip. Um, if you feel that you want to make a slight adjustment, now's the time to do it. But other than that, that's you. This is, I find, the best method for adjusting the handbrake. Tidy up, and if, like me, you forgot to wear gloves, wipe away any grease from any of the surface areas you're in contact with. Well, folks, there we go. It's obviously dark. It's late at night. This took me a lot longer than I planned due to an ABS sensor being broken. They obviously go get one but overall yeah that's full upgrade completed now so that's the left hand drive diesel automatic now has mintex pads front and rear it has mtech drilled and groove front 
uh, MTEC drilled and grooved rear. Front are still 295 millimeter standard size Venta discs, but the rear is now upgraded to the Venta disc over solid. Um, too late to get a chance to get out tonight to get a drive. Um, I have to, would have to move all sorts of stuff and I don't want to disturb the neighbours. So tomorrow I have a big drive, I have to go for an appointment. So might as well take this, take the opportunity. Um, bled the whole system up there, did it off camera. It just was taking a wee bit too long and the battery was running out. But um, you know yourselves guys, you saw the process. Um, hook it up, twist the nipple, bleed it out. Either pump yourself or get someone else to help you out. But yeah, it really is that easy. Um, with regards to handbrake now, <laughs> it's rock lock solid for one, two clicks. Um, it, I personally find that's the best way. Uh, if you want to go along the lines of the mini compensator, brilliant modification. Um, I've done it in a few of my cars. I typically find automatics usually have an easier life on their handbrakes because of the way they held hold anyway whenever they're in drive. So people aren't yanking them up to move them about. Uh, this one here seems to have a pretty good set of cables on it already. So yeah, that's it. That's big upgrade done in this. Been wanting to get this done for a while. Um, what's next for the left hand drive? Well, some of you guys saw this beautiful score that somebody in the supermarket decided to give me. Um, I have panels coming to repanel the whole car. And I do have a premium bumper and a Mark II rear bumper that I'm probably going to put on the car. It was originally meant to be a Vanden Plas long wheelbase. It sat in the shed for you know, two years at Longbridge before it was auctioned off by Pricewaterhouse. That's why if you actually look up the registration on a VIN or number plate website, it actually says Rover 75 Vanden Plas. Logbook even says Rover 75 Vanden Plas. So, yeah. Uh, interesting car. I feel like I've done something worthwhile. Um, when will I get the bodywork sorted out? Honestly, I don't know. Plan to do it over the summer. Um, it's all guns go crazy now on my yellow tour. Need to get it sorted. Uh, I've got almost everything to get it done. And I want to get it done pretty soon. So, guys, thank you very much. I know this was a long video. I tried to edit down as short as possible. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. I can't improve my channel without people commenting. Uh, as always, follow me on social media. I have had the links in the description below. And hopefully, I'll see you guys again in the next video. Stay safe and make sure you enjoy your cars.